We have to make an axis, and in most of us make an axis around these triangles. So there's a, essentially a triangle here in enamel, and there's a triangle of dentin in, on the lingual. So we need to remove triangle one, and we need to remove triangle two. One can be removed with the round bird that you started with. Triangle two can be removed with the what? Delicate tapered diamond, Gates Glidden, SX. There's a million different tools. But you want to be able to be a king or queen and say, this is mine. I am the owner of this root canal system. This is the contract we have. And if you're going around corners, we've lost at the get-go. Then we have to know how to curve a canal. You're going to learn that skill today. I'm going to watch your motion on how to curve a canal, make it a file rather, and make it from a dumb file to a smart file. And then we need to know how to follow the canal. So there's different ways to hold the file depending on what we're doing. Are we following? Are we smoothing? Um, just like golf clubs, you hold a putter different than we hold a driver, don't we? And we have to know when we're at the end of the canal, so we need an uh, instrument, root ZX, to do that. And then we ne need to know what does the end of the canal mean? Is it the physiologic terminus or the radiographic terminus? What do you want to do when, John? And then we'll need some instruments to shape it with, to clean it with. So we'll need some solutions to clean it with. I'll tell you the right solutions to use. Um, and, the, and I'm showing you first, these are the Pro Taper Universal. Today we're going to be teaching you yet an upgrade from the Pro Taper Universal, Pro Taper Next. And I can tell you right now, there's three big differences. Do you know what they are? One, it has all the benefits of the geometries of Pro Taper, but secondly, it has the benefit of an M wire, which is, makes it more flexible, and it also has a, a unique um, offset core so that it doesn't have as much blades locking potentially to break. So it becomes a very flexible and forgiving instrument and yet tremendously efficient. And you're going to have the opportunity to test X1, 2, and 3 today, and you're going to have the opportunity to test uh, Wave 1 primary. So there's the Wave 1, and there are three files. And the concept here is you choose the one in the middle and hope that that's accurate for what you're doing, and most of the time it is. Maybe 80 to 90 percent of the time it is. You still got to have a glide path, John, and, and don't forget that. So we need some ways to make the shape. Then we got to remove the what at the end? Smear layer. And so we're going to use Q-Mix to remove that, and you have that. We're going to experience that today. Then we'll make a cone fit, and if you're doing a carrier base, this would be a verifier. And understanding the concept of the flow of gutta percha as the plugger moves down, the canal on the left gets filled, and then the lateral canals off the lateral canals get filled, and as you go deeper, the small ones on the right get obturated, and then they branch themselves. So this warm wave, both of shaping and wave of compaction has great value in filling these guys up since we're about a foot away from the patient. And then to understand that the foramina are not round and we want have round materials to fill them with, so we have to warm them or chemical or friction, but warming is the best because it's um, safe and it's predictable. And then you warm the material, it distorts so that the gutta percha interface becomes very narrow, which if we look at it histologically chopping up a tooth, you can see these bays of sealer, and that's what we don't want. What we want is the gutta percha dentin interface. This is gutta percha, here's dentin. That interface can be made down to the size of a red blood cell, which is, as you remember from school, 10 microns. That's a little tiny space, and if that space is the weakest link, we want to optimize that seal.